I waited every weekend and you never showed up. And you always told, you always said that you would. <laughs> what is it like as a man who used a substance that would allow you to make that little boy wait forever? The things in which like I have done in my past have come back to haunt me, mm. okay? You know, because like you say, peace, love, and positivity, right? Yeah. But, you know, how can you have peace, love, and positivity if you don't have experience, strength, and hope? Because they both come together. What's up, guys? It's Logic. Hey, what's up, guys? What's up? What's up, guys? It's Logic. Do you all hear me? Is this what you want? What's up, guys? I'm Logic. Welcome to... <laughs> Logically speaking, <laughs> Logically speak. with my dad, uh, Bobby Hall, Smokey, the legend, the legend, <laughs> the legend. <laughs> so, so what is your official title? How do you like it to be said? Dad? Smokey the legend. Smokey the legend. And why are you a legend, Dad? Because of my experience within the go-go industry and the music industry. That's you know, and you've, you've been inducted recently into what? I got in, I, I was inducted to the CPU. What is that? Hall of Fame. Congo Players United. The go-go what? Call it Hall of Fame. The go-go Hall of Fame. That's my daddy. So let's, let's welcome him to the, uh, to the podcast. <sighs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> all right. Well, um, I don't even know what the hell we're going to talk about because we damn near talked about it all last night at the, at the kitchen table. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about a lot, and I'm excited to talk about more. I think the first thing I do want to tell you, Dad, and this is some real shit. First of all, you got your drink? Um, my beer's over there. I'm good. Where's your I, beer? I, I'll drink you my, good? I'll drink water. All right, cool. Oh, no, see, he getting your beer. I'm trying to cheers you, Daddy. Yeah, he going to get it. Look at that. T-Man's going to get it. We going to wait. We going to sit here and wait. There's your, there you go. There we go, man. I'm going to cheers you. I love cheers you. you. Cheers. Love Look you. at that eyes. You made that contact. That's real nigga <laughs> shit right there. <laughs> mm-hmm. How you feel about niggas is mad that I say nigga? They be mad at me. What I they mad nigga. about? I don't know what they why mad they, about. Why they stressing? I don't know. Huh? Why, they, why they stressing, daddy? Why I don't know. You tell me. You say, I, I, I don't know. I mean, you black. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Should I say incognito? <laughs> <laughs> for sure. For sure, daddy. Okay, so last night I, uh, we came here. We at the Beat Mansion right now. And I said, uh, my dad said, he said, I want a beer. I said, Dad, I said, you're a recovering alcoholic. What'd you say to me? I said, no, I'm not an alcoholic. I'm a recovered crack addict. <laughs> and I laughed and I said. And I say recovered. Yeah, recovered. Recovered. Thank God. Yeah, 100%. And I was like, damn, that's deep. And then we had a beer. I think it's the first beer we ever had together. Mm -hmm. But then we smoked a joint, but you said we smoked a joint before. I don't remember that, you? I don't remember. I think that was the first joint we shared. Yeah, you know, when we was in Calabasas, when I was in your crib, and I stayed in the, in the movie room all mm. day and night. <laughs> but you had your movie room, you know, your little theater. Yeah, I had a movie theater. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, all I did was just, like, stay in the movie theater. That was my thing. I could, you know, you'd be busy, but I was busy watching the movies. And hitting that weed. So yeah. good. He's you know? hitting the weed. He's, he's a real one, Daddy. So I'm really excited to jump into this because we talked about so much last night that I kind of want to just talk about today. And I want you to know that this is a safe space and that we're good. And you know what's really funny is um, I, we haven't spoken in a couple of years. So let's talk about this. And ain't no, it ain't no defense. It ain't no that. I know there's cameras in front of us and lights and all this other <laughs> shit. But I'm excited to talk about a few things in a good way. And I want you to know that you really are in a safe space. I'm not here to, I ain't trying to paint you in no light. I know you've been upset previously about me being so open and so vocal and so honest about things that you've done in your past. You know, you, some other members of the family will be like, why'd you say that? To which I respond, what do I, what do I say when you say, why would you say that? What do I say? I don't know. What I say, do, why would you what, do it? Then why would you do it? Mm -hmm. So as a little boy experiencing some of the things that I experienced, that's why I talked about those things. But in no way am I here to discredit the man that you are today. So let me say, Daddy, 
<laughs> you are a good man. You are a strong man. You have your faults just as I. You are imperfect just as I and any other human being out there. But I, without a doubt, can say, as your son of 33 years, that this is the strongest and most honest version of my father that I've ever seen. And I just want to say I love you. And I well, I love you too, man. Yeah, you, you know, shit. I want to thank you for having me come out, you know. I for mean, sure. Uh, it's been a really great experience. And I've only been here for a few hours, man. I know. You already asked me to buy you a truck and yeah, give you some money. Know, and... It's true, <laughs> nigga. You did. You asked me last night. You said, I need a truck. I said, let's talk about that later. He said, we'll talk about that later. I'll buy you a truck, daddy. Oh, thank you. You want a truck? I'll buy you a truck. I'll buy you a truck. I just wish you didn't ask me 16 ask hours in the truck. <laughs> what, your son? No, no, let's, let's talk about that really, really, really quick. So the last time I stopped talking to you, it was because I drew a line, and that line was about money. You know, one of the first times I actually let you back in my life 10 years ago, the first thing you walked in the house, you did what? Oh, talk about money. You talked about money. What did you ask me for, Dad? Uh, How much money was it? You remember? No, I don't remember. It was $600 because you had a fucking... Oh, yeah, $600. You had a court that, that's case. That's the first time, that was the, too. That was, no, that wasn't the first time. That was the first time since we had stopped talking yeah. and we talked again. You asked me for $600 because was, it was some court case, something about a woman, some XYZ. We don't got to get into it. And, uh, yeah, you wasn't, in, you wasn't in the door 15 minutes, and you had asked me for $600. Now, we worked that out, and I helped you the best I could, and we, we situated that. But I... I uh, I know that this time, this is very, very different. And this, I mean this, man. I'm not here to try to paint you as some monster, some asshole, because you're not. Once again, you've made mistakes. Who hasn't as a human being? Right. And I'm here to tell you that I love you. And, you know, not, not 24 hours into your being here, not only did you ask me to buy you a truck, uh, you asked me, you know, for some money and, and, you know, trying to stay afloat, X, Y, Z. And you kept talking to me about money, talking to me about money. Now, in the past, I would have said, why the fuck are you talking to me about money? And I would have just shut it all down because I drew my line and you crossed it. Now, mm -hmm. here I am at 33 years old and we had a conversation today. And I said, I wasn't angry. I wasn't upset. Mm -hmm. I just said, I just said, Dad. But I felt bad. I felt bad about it. That, you know, that's where I felt bad because I didn't look at it like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't look at it like, boom. I'm you looked at it like you were telling me about your situation. Exactly. And I think that's the difference. I think, I think I see that. I understand that. You are in your situation. And, you know what I'm saying? You ain't in poverty, but obviously at the same time, it's like, you know what I mean? Like, you, you're hustling. And yeah, you're struggling. Of course, you're of struggling. Course, and of you're course. doing your thing. Of course. Now, but a lot of people are struggling, brother. You know, a lot. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people out here struggling. But the bottom line is, is how do I get through that struggle? You know what I'm saying? How am I gonna come back? You know what I'm saying? How am I gonna be able to bounce back from that? And, and I bounce to something else. And I truly recognize that I think for the first time in my life, I realized that when you talk to me about buying you a truck, which I will do, and when you talk to me about helping you, which I will do now, um, it isn't for you selfishly, it's for my little brother and your exactly. and your wife. Exactly. Exactly. Now, respectfully, from the bottom of my heart, I think that a lot of the shit that you used to ask me for 10 plus years ago, it wasn't for them. Because guess what? That little boy didn't exist. No, because it was it was it was for my self-centeredness. You know, bottom line is as as I've gotten to evolve to where I'm at right now, I realize about the self-centeredness. I realize the self-sacrifice that I give today. Mm. You know, I didn't sacrifice anything a long time ago, yeah. you know, but I feel that I sacrificed today. I, I feel that you sacrificed today. Yeah. I see how much you care about that little boy. You care about that not, little not boy. little boy, your little brother. My little brother, yeah, but I'm saying that beautiful little boy, I see because I was him. And you didn't sacrifice when I was him. Mm -mm. And you didn't sacrifice when my sisters were him or my brothers were him. And guess what? I'm not here to, to beat you up or make you feel bad. I'm here to celebrate you because you finally feel it. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and the happiness and the gratitude and the appreciation that I feel when I see how much you feel about that little boy, the way I wish you would have felt about me, it makes me happy. Well, you know, 
the bottom line is Ashton is a miracle man because you, you know I was he's a miracle why daddy he wasn't, you, you but know, why is he a miracle because, daddy because 33 years, years after ago, you had me what I happened I had a vasectomy you right? had a vasectomy that's how you know the nigga black had a vasectomy <laughs> they snipped your nuts yeah they sure did cut them balls off and you 30, came out of there boy <laughs> <laughs> and 33 years, or not, a little less, a little less than that, uh, you know, 28 some odd years later, you still, you had a child that pushed yeah. through. Yeah. And um, and he's a miracle. He really is. And, and he's he a, saved he's a my life. Child. See, he saved my life. He's mm-hmm. saving my life every day. You know, Ashton saves my, my wife saves my life every day. Shout out to Mara. You know, as I told you, as I told you, you know, um, my wife is my rock, man. You know, she's my rock. Yeah. You know, and um, Aston, who's just, he's just him, man. That's all I can say. He brings me so much joy. Just like seeing my grandson. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's, you know, that brings my heart joy, being able to see little Bobby hang out with my grandson oh, because yeah. I haven't seen him ever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Except for stealing pictures off of Instagram. Instagram. But don't worry, I'm gonna send you pictures now. <laughs> so, so me, you know, I just want you to understand, man, that when we had that conversation today, and you know, since you, since you had, you, you had been in the house, you know, sixteen, 16 hours, hours, sixteen hours, and by then you had asked me for everything in the world. Everything in the world, Daddy. You asked me for a car. You asked me for to help you pay your rent. You asked me for all this other shit. And um, and you know what? It's the first time in our relationship that I didn't want to block you or I didn't want to. I felt that you had crossed the line that I set and you crossed it anyway. And then I realized that this time it is truly beyond a selfish place. This time it is about your son. It is about your wife. Because as a 68-year-old man. Keep your eyes old. As a 68-year-old man, you may not have that many years left, and here you are not being selfish. You're trying to create something for them to, that you want to be able to leave behind, and you're coming to your son that you love, and you just you want to try to find some source of income and help so that the people that you absolutely love will be okay. And there's nothing wrong with that. And that's why I didn't say, fuck you. That's why I didn't say, here we go again, here we go again, because it wasn't the father that I knew smoking crack and running around and trying to get what he could get. It wasn't the father that I knew that stole my identity as a child and maxed out credit cards and ruined my fucking credit. That's not the same man. That's not the man that I'm looking in the eyes today. Yeah, but you know, what I want to say about that is you know what goes around comes around dog you know the things in which like i have done in my past have come back to haunt me Mm. okay but what i realize is how am i going to deal with those things that come back from the past to haunt me i have to number one address them i have to look at them you know because like you say peace love and positivity right yeah but you know, how can you have peace, love, and positivity if you don't have experience, strength, and hope? Because they both come together. And that's your saying. That's how I say And I love it. Say it one more time. Peace, love, and positivity. Say yours one more time. <laughs> experience, strength, and hope. Experience, strength, and hope. That's, that's right. That's, right. that's real. And, and I appreciate that. And I think one thing that I want to, you know, we've never done anything like this. This is an exclusive. <laughs> exclusive. <laughs> DJ Drama about to pop out this motherfucker right now. I'll tell you why. And, and, you know, I really want you to know, like, we're in a safe space, Dad. I understand it. Like, I could look you in the face and tell you this is the biggest platform that you've ever had in your motherfucking life right now, right here. Mm-hmm. Talking to the world, talking to millions of people. Not to, mm-hmm. not to, not to freak you out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm saying this is you and you're the most realist and you're most honest. And I'm going to be real. We're we going to be here for a little bit, man. We're going to be able to talk and have a conversation. We can take breaks. You can take a piss. You can smoke a cigarette. You can do whatever the fuck you want, daddy. I love you. And, <laughs> no, for real. And um, I'm just excited to talk. But I think the biggest thing before we truly get into what we're about to get into is I have grown as a man. And in the years that I put you out of my life and I did not talk to you because you crossed the line, I asked you not to cross and you crossed it over and over and over again. The same line that you crossed five times in the last 16 hours since you landed I'm at a different place in my life. 
and I want you to know that I love you and I'm not going to block you and we're going to talk through shit. And I wasn't in a place to talk through shit because I was raising my own son because mm -hmm. I was, you know, I am a fucking walking company because there were so many things that I needed to handle for myself. And, you know, we, w one thing we talked about earlier, father, who I love, we talked about the fact that, you know, if I help you, cause I know you, you've talked shit about me. You've said, you know, dad, Bobby don't help nobody. You've said this. I'm well, not saying you saying it right now. No, no. I, I mean, the bottom you've line said is, it. it's, it's been said by me before. Exactly. But the bottom line is what I realize is that you don't owe me a motherfucking thing. You don't owe me nothing, you know? And I, I, I had to come to the realization of that, you know? I gave you your talent, but my talent was given to me yeah. by my father, which is given to you by your father, For sure. which is given to you, and which you're gonna give your son, hundred percent, Bobby. Yeah. Okay. So it's going down the line. It is, but I just want to say one thing. I want to say that um, when you when you when we when we spoke earlier, and that I know you've said things like, "My son don't help me. My son don't help anybody." Da 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 respectfully in a place I know that was said from ignorance because there's also a big side of you that you know now, but you didn't know at the time. You know, I have helped people in my family and I've helped people outside of my family. I've helped people afford homes. I've helped the homeless. I've helped people in my black community. I've donated anonymously. Oh, I know. You know? I know all those things that you've done. But let me finish. So what I'm saying is, is, uh, Respectfully, Dad, you actually don't know all the things that I've done because most people don't know all the things that I've done because I don't exploit the fact that I give, let alone to my black community. Mm -hmm. I'm not out here trying to prove my blackness. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not a nigga who goes to the hood with a fucking turkey every Thanksgiving <laughs> and throws it out. I'm not. That's not yeah, who I am. Yeah, so with that yeah, being yeah. said, Daddy, I got you. when we spoke earlier today, I know there's a lot of motherfuckers even in our family who could be like, oh, Bobby, don't, you know, he got all this money, he got millions of dollars, but he don't want to help nobody. He don't want to buy nobody a house. Well, hold up, let's just step back real quick. And I'm going to say all this, and it's, it's not going to be a one-sided one conversation, Dad. I promise you. But this, uh, I just want to get this out, and I want to say it, and then I really want to go back and forth, and I want to have fun. I want to laugh, and I want to have a good time, but I just want to say this, because it's very important to me. There was a time when you came to me, asked me for $850,000 to buy you a house studio for you and your band. Now, I've also had my sister ask me to buy her a house. I've had my brothers ask me to give them money. I've given tens of thousands of dollars to my brothers and my sisters, and I've seen them piss it away. So when you do the math, right, and we did the math earlier today, exactly. it's you, it's my mama, it's my brother, it's my sister, it's my other sister, it's my other sister, it's my other sister, it's my other brother, it's my other brother. That's nine. Now, let's not talk about how many fucking kids all these people got, but let's just talk about those nine people. Yeah. So if I'm going to buy y'all a decent house, that's $500,000. That's for two people, one million, two million, three million, four and a half million dollars just to purchase that, let alone mortgage, let alone other bills that come into that. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, you got a house, so then what? That's nine houses. Let's not let's talk about nine vehicles. Let's talk about nine cars that I gotta pay for. Let's talk about nine gas bills a month I gotta get paid for. Let's talk about nine AT&T fucking bills I gotta pay for. Nine Comcast bills, HB, HBO <laughs> bills. Not no, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep going. Cause guess what? If I'm, if I'm paying all this money, ain't nobody on welfare no more. Niggas ain't fucking broke no more. So they ain't on welfare, they ain't on food stamps. That's nine people I gotta pay for food for. That's nine people I gotta pay for vacations for. Now let's also talk about the fact that a majority of your children and my mother's children all have children. So let's duplicate that motherfucker times about <laughs> however much that is. Fuck that, fuck that shit. And unfortunately I've learned when I give 10,000 here, 5,000 here of cash to somebody and then they blow it and then they don't got nothing. They don't use it right. And then they look at me like I fucked up or I did something wrong and then they come back and they ask me again and again and again. Now as a, as a fucking millionaire who has broken that cycle, made it out the hood, educated myself and understand what it means to be self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. There is no way as a fucking man that I could ever, as much as it hurts me to see the people that I love struggle, give them money and watch them just burn it to nothing again. So I say all that to say, daddy, I love you with all my heart. And the only reason I ain't never given you a crazy amount of money 
It's because I didn't want to see you blow it. Now, with all that said, we had a conversation today. I'm going to buy you a truck and I'm going to do more than that. And once I say what I'm about to say right now, I'm going to shut the fuck up and we're going to have a really good, fun conversation. Daddy, you want to leave something to your son. Your son, your little boy, Ashton. You want to leave a legacy to him and his mother, T, his mother, exactly, T. Exactly, exactly. And we talked about that and we had an amazing conversation last night and I finally realized a great way to not enable you or my brothers or different people, but help you and that's by making music together. Of course, but see, we've always had that. We've always had that. That's one thing that, you know, we all are born with. Your brothers, your sisters, you know. That's all from you, though. No, it's all from God, which gave it to my father, which gave it to me, which gave it to you, you know. But I'm here, and I'm where I am with it, and what I'm saying is, instead of giving you money, Daddy, you know, I'll help you out. I've helped my family out, but instead of just giving you money, oh, I don't want to. I don't want you to give me. Money. I mean, my I nigga, my nigga, my whatever. nigga. You've asked me for money, so let's work. I, I get it. I hear what you're saying right now, but I'm gonna look you in your fucking eyes and I'm gonna tell you, you have asked me for a million dollars. A million dollars. Yes, you did. You asked me for eight hundred and fifty thousand. Oh yeah, well that right for there. For a studio comes for you and your million dollars. Exactly. Now what I'm saying is we ain't fucking with none of that shit. I am so happy, honored, and blessed to th the fact that I came. We came to a realization mm -hmm. that we could do a few records together, make a few songs together, because you are a really amazing talent. That I could, I could give you a stage of all stages that you've never seen. You took me to open mics. You took me to fucking Smokey, the experience, and you're fucking playing congos, and you got your amazing band. And here I am now, blessed enough at 33 years old to be able to give you a stage, just like you gave me one. And the difference is, I don't gotta give you money. Mm -hmm. I can give you publishing on a song, and we can make records together and talk about real shit together and talk about the things that we have gone through, what you put me through, what I've been through, what you've experienced, what you've gone through. Put that shit on a motherfucking record mm -hmm. and you get publishing that you can give to my little brother and your beautiful wife for the rest of their lives. And when I had this fucking realization, dad, just last night as you asking me for money, I was like, <laughs> I was like, this is crazy because it can be deeper than that. So I just want to say, this very long-winded fucking intro. I'm very happy to look at you respectfully as Look at me. My look, daddy. Look, look at me, man. I know. I be thinking in keep, the ethos. Keep, keep your eyes on me. I'm very... I like the, your, the eyes reflect. I'm everything. very sexy, daddy. What can I say? <laughs> but I'm, I'm just so happy, man, because it's different. It's not, you're not coming to me, even though you did. You came to me. You asked me for some shit. But then I had this realization of, you don't got to ask me for nothing. Let's use your talent. You know, at 68 years old, the man that I love, and let's set you up to be able to leave that legacy for the little boy I wish was me, that you mm -hmm. love so much mm -hmm. now, and that I'm happy that you do, my little brother Ashton. So with that, I shake your hand as a fucking man, and I and say- I give you a hug. I love you, yeah. I love you, and I'm excited for the future. Now with all that shit said- Yes, sir. How's it hanging? How you doing? <laughs> How are you? <laughs> How the fuck are you, Daddy? Look, man, let me tell you, like I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying my time with you. I'm glad. You know, I really am, and and everybody in the organization, Ooh, you know, it's a family, you man. You make it sound like a mafia. It is. It is a mafia. It, it is we'll the mob. Kill you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Now we can have fun. So, Daddy, question: mm. What's it like smoking crack? I don't, know. Like, I don't remember. You gotta remember, nigga. What's it's your name? It's been too long, baby. It's been too no, long. No, you gotta it's remember. It's been so something. long. What's it like? You take a hit of crack, which is leprechauns naked. Like, no. what's that like? No, it wasn't like that. What was it like? I, I'm not even. You don't gotta get too serious. Let's talk about it. Like for real. You smoking crack? Bottom line is this. What's that like? What's it like drinking? It's fucking amazing. I see leprechauns naked. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's amazing. I love. I love. I, I enjoy drinking. I mean, bottom line is, man, the way that. The way that the drugs are today out yeah. here, yeah. crack, methamphetamine, you know, there's, there's so many drugs now that's taking the place. The crack is old. That's, that's old news, man. The problem that they got now is, you know, uh, the fentanyl that's coming into the country, man. I know. Trust you know, me. And, and, I would, and, and, and young kids are dying of this in the school systems, mm. man. 
You know, last week when I was at home, two kids uh, 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 OD'd right in the, in the bathroom in their school. That's deep. Okay, so, you know, uh, a crack epidemic was then. That was in the 80s. Yep. The epidemic now is the opiate epidemic, the fentanyl. Mm. And it's killing the young people. You know, it's killing a lot of young kids, man. I think it's because in many ways, even though it is a quote unquote cool thing to do, I think a lot of people tend to want to escape. I mean, isn't that why anybody does substance in a way? You know, I'm sitting here, I'm sipping scotch. I really love it. I enjoy it. I think I have a hold on it, you know, and I think I have a hold on it, daddy, because I went to Alcoholics Anonymous with you as a child. And I saw different people speak from yourself to my mother, to friends, families, cousins, brothers, sisters, police officers, criminals, you know, <laughs> doctors, lawyers, people from all, all walks of life. And it, and it, in, a, in a way, it scared me straight. Um, almost. <laughs> No, it's a joke. Anyway, it scared me to the point. It scared me to the point where you wild as shit. Oh, wow, you know me, Daddy. Uh, it scared me to the point where, like, I didn't really actually drink till I was like twenty-seven or twenty-eight years old. Mm -hmm. So when I ask you not to not to go back to it, and if if by any means you're uncomfortable, I won't press you. But uh, don't press me. You said don't. No, please don't. I'm just all I'm saying is it was fucked. The experience I remember it. The experience was fucked. It was hell. It was like. I would never, you know, I would never ever wish it on my worst enemy. Because back then, that was then, the, the, the grips of addiction back then for me was really, really, really impossible to break. Mm. You see what I'm saying? I see but what you're saying. But I had to have what you call a spiritual awakening to be able to get to the plateau where I'm at today, where I don't smoke crack, where I don't even worry about it. If I ever think about smoking crack, it comes and it goes because it's more like a thought. You just because like, I know I played this, I play it through. Uh, Where would I be? I'd be homeless. I would be helpless. I would be probably locked up in jail because of my habit. You know, so mm. you know, money and drugs are the root of all evil, brother. Let me ask you a question, Dad. So, you know, a lot of a lot of and you you know, I mean, I ain't finna call you a player, but you had your fair share. I'm not share. a player. Yeah, I just fuck a lot, right? Big big pun, you know what I'm saying? You've had <laughs> your, you've had your fair share of ladies, Daddy. You know what I'm saying? Some fine ladies. And well, the course, finest lady I have is my wife. I know, know that's right. Amen. Cheers to that. <laughs> but <laughs> unforgettable with <laughs> that's what you are. With that being said, um, you know, you got ladies men out there, you got women that you have loved and you, you've been with, and I feel like addiction is in many ways almost like a, a deep love, something that you obsess about, something that you think about every moment. And I won't hold you on this subject for too long, you know, we'll talk about it here and there, but um, when, when I think about something that could uh, keep a father from his son, you know, there was, there was weekends. Once again, I don't say this. I'm not, I'm not angry. We're just talking about it. You know, there was weekends as a little boy. I remember packing, uh, I didn't get emotional and I won't, but I remember, I might, I might, <laughs> I, but I remember, I remember packing my, uh, my backpack. And yeah, well, you were little. You weren't that little. How old were no, you? I was a little nigga. How old? Seven, eight years old. And I packed my, my bag, and it's cool. I don't know. I don't know if a tear's going to come, but if it does, I won't, I won't shy it away. I pack a, I pack a backpack because my mom tells me that, uh, you know, my dad is going to come pick me up because he promised that he would come pick me up. And it's all good. I'm not trying to milk it. I can fuck about it to you. I'm just dealing with my emotions as they come right now. And uh, my mom says that my dad is going to come and pick me up. And he doesn't pick me up. And I wait all day outside. Mm. And I wait. And I wait. Mm. And you don't come. And it's not the first time. And I want you to let me finish because I want you to hear it. You know, because there's a part of me that has grown as I am and... Uh, and uh, developed, as I feel mentally, there's still that little boy that, uh, 
And it's all good. I'm the missus that, that, that. No, that. it ain't that. Let me finish. Okay. Uh, that uh, the little boy that's still waiting on a curb mm. for his dad. Mm. Mm. And it's all good. Once again, you know, I'm not here. And I want you to let me finish, daddy. I don't want you to talk. I want you to hear me because I want to be heard. Um, it's funny. I'm just thinking about how much are we finna be laughing in like five minutes. <laughs> um, sorry. Just give, I feel me, just give me a second. Don't talk. I mean, just give me a second. I want you to hear me, Dad. I'm a master manipulator. I'm a. I'm the king's con con man, and I got it from you. So I want you to listen as I tell you, because I'm not here to try to con you. And I don't think you're going to try to con me by any means. But I know you've gotten yourself out of some slippery fucking situations by talking. And the last thing I want you to do right now with the utmost love and respect, Daddy, is I want you to listen to me. And I'm going to take my time. Uh, <laughs> uh, I waited for you. Mm. And, uh, damn, it's in deep. It's in deep. Just give me a second, all right? I got That's you. a lot, nigga. We never talked about it. I got shit. you. Well, I waited, and I didn't wait a weekend. I waited every weekend. I waited every weekend that ever I ever had. Sorry. Give me a second. Don't interrupt me. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> just let me just be for a second, please. I'm not trying to make this some shit, some bullshit. I waited every weekend and you never showed up. And you always told, you always said that you would. <laughs> and I love looking back. Sorry, just... You know, we never had this talk. <laughs> Nigga, that's 33 years right here. That's what this is. Yeah, you told me that you would come, Daddy. You never did. You told me that you was going to pick me up. And then I waited, and I look at my son, and I think about how much I, I, what, my, what my son means to me, and I can never make him sit on a curb. And I don't say this to make you feel bad. I, I don't. I really love you. This is not the beat you up show. This is the here we are. This is the we're going to rejoice. So let me get it out. Because you're like me, we're the same. I know you love to talk, and I love to talk. <laughs> and I've been talking and talking, so, but let me I'm keep so talking. I hear you. And let me just say, I was that little boy, and you told me you would come, and you promised, and you promised. You know, I'm a man of my word today because you aren't. And you promised me. And I remember the... I remember the sidewalk that I would sit on every time you said you would come see me and you never came to see me. And I remember uh, my mom telling me not to bother. And I did. I bothered every time because I loved you. And I love you. And I just, uh, I just wanted you to know that it really hurt. And so... We won't stay on this too long, but I just want to ask, what is it like to have used? <laughs> Sorry, this ain't even me crying. This is me as a child who never got the opportunity to cry. Mm -hmm. What is it like as a man who used a substance and what was it like using a substance? 
that would allow you to make that little boy wait forever? What was it like to use it? Was it worth it? What did it feel like? And I mean it, nigga, don't say, no, you the best thing. Mm -hmm. What was it like, nigga? Cause you wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So it must, what did it feel like? Nigga, did it feel like a thousand virgins? No, it felt like, like, it felt, it it's, like? no, you want to know what it felt like? It felt like being in hell. Uh, it felt like being, having something control me. Mm, yeah. Okay. So that's what it was. As I said, the drugs, you know, like, like Greg James said that, man. <laughs> Cocaine's a hell of a drug. Cocaine's a hell of a drug. <laughs> you know, I mean, okay. for real. That's real. That's you real. know. <laughs> he so, was in front of you me. Know, yeah. He said that yeah, I was young, self-centered, stupid as fuck, yeah. you know? But yeah, if yeah. I knew then what I know now, my life would probably be different. For sure, yeah. You know. Can I just thank you for letting me get that out? Can I just thank you for letting me hear you get that out? Thank you, Daddy. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Logic here, and I just wanted to tell you that this podcast is brought to you by BetterHelp. BetterHelp offers affordable and convenient online therapy on a schedule that works for you. I'm clearly reading off camera because I want to make sure that you guys get every piece of information possible. It's the same professional service you'd get from an in-person therapist, but with the option to communicate when and how you want by chat, phone, or video call. Getting started is easy. Just go to their site and fill out a brief questionnaire. Then they'll match you with a licensed therapist based on your needs and preferences. If you don't find the right match the first time, don't worry. You can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Go to betterhelp.com logic to get your first month of therapy for free. Now, I really mean it. This is important. This is special. Seek it out. If you need it, these people are truly here for you. They've been there for me. I appreciate Bob, you. I love you, man. You just don't know. See, I love you. I knew that you were going to be a star from the time you were born. Right out the nutsack. You out the nutsack, boy. Yeah. Oh, shit. All right, tell me about it. Let's talk about how great I am. <laughs> Why the fuck not? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> No. I don't know, man. You, you know. Hey, thanks for letting. No, let me just take. Let me just take a quick second. I'm gonna be honest, Dad. I didn't expect to cry. I didn't. I didn't. And the only thing is, I think about that little kid sometimes who was out there on that corner. So thank you for that, and thank you for what you said. And you I know? can understand how you feel because I never want Ashton to feel like that. Damn, that's deep. And I don't want him to feel that way, Daddy. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I'm so happy that we're kind of finding this fucking medium. You know what I'm saying? Of like being able to work together. And I'm going to be honest, Dad, there's a part of me that's scared, you know, because if I work with you, there's a, there's a, there's a certain, it's like Drake's dad, you know? It's like I'm giving you a, a, a certain power. And I'm scared to death that you will abuse that power. Well, no, man, bottom line is I appreciate everything you do for me. And, and it, the power that I, I will get would be the power of security for my family. That's, you know, that's- but I feel that's that shit, power. dude. I feel it, man. Like, dad, when, when you didn't pick me up on the curb, but you burst in through the door like Kramer, talking about, hey, what's good? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know that that was all from, you know, uh, an addict's perspective. You feel what I'm saying? Excuse me, y'all. Uh, I know that was, it wasn't you. Like that really wasn't who you who you were. And I look at the man that you are now and I look at how much you love my brother and how much you love your wife and I know that this is you. Now, going back to what I was saying about women, because I remember what I was gonna say. A lot of players, you know, you ever heard the term settle down? I'm gonna settle down. Of course. That's because most motherfuckers like to fuck and they keep fucking and fucking and meeting women and this and that and da 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 da, but they just get so goddamn old that they're like. Papa was a rolling stone. <laughs> Wherever he laid his hat was his own. Get it, daddy? But that's what I was. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know. But that's what I was saying, and what I mean is, you have men, particularly, who, you know, they just, thank you. Thank you very much. They, uh, <laughs> Daddy left me. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, they, they, uh, they settled down mm -hmm. because they're chasing pussy and they literally get tired of doing it. Well, you have to realize pussy ain't nothing but meat on a bone. <laughs> what is that? Sing it. Sing it, Daddy. Sing it, Smokey. 
Fred Pussy ain't nothing but meat on a bone. Pocket chicken, socket chicken, leave it alone. Say what? <laughs> yeah, that's, one more time. Hit it one more time. <laughs> no, you, you hit it for it. Pussy ain't nothing but a meat, meat on a bone. bone. You can suck it, you can fuck it. You can leave it alone. What's that? That's, <laughs> that's my daddy. You got a snap right there. Um, but yeah, no, for sure. So do you feel in a way... I mean, you are also a player, you are also an addict, but do you feel, were, do you, are, right? I think that never leaves. I'm a retired, oh, 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 oh. Retired addict. Oh, 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 G. <laughs> a triple O, G. So do you feel that the way a player gets tired and feels the need to settle down? And I want you to really think about this before you answer. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that you as an addict just got tired of chasing drugs and in a way was almost forced to like reevaluate your life in older age. Or did you have some personal moment? What was it for you that made you really want to change? You are a changed man, I'll tell you that. What made me want to change was the fact that if nothing changes, nothing changes, brother. Son, if nothing changes, nothing changes. So if I'm not trying to change, I'm not going to change nothing. Uh, you but know? you had tried but to it, change before, so but, what was the change here? You tried to change. I was, tried it, to smoke had, cigarettes, or, right. or tried to quit cigarettes. Right. I tried to drink less at a time, but mm -hmm. then there was that moment that was like, this is it. So what the fuck was that? Nigga, you smoked crack your whole life, bro. So what the fuck was the moment? All the kids you done had, all the shit you done done, all the jail time you seen, all the I have criminal never activity. Been in jail. Whatever. Well, all right. Never. All the times you got arrested by the police. Okay, because I never been in jail. All right. All the times you got arrested by the police, Dad. Well, you, got a, I, you got arrested, nigga. I, I, I seen your rap Look, I seen yours too. You ain't got. So one. what I'm saying, I don't got one. Because real, real G's moving silence like lasagna. Lil Wayne, I love you. So what I'm saying no. is, uh, what I'm saying is. What was the fucking moment where you went from smoking crack to being like, I gotta stop doing this shit? <laughs> like, what was the, the moment? The moment was when I found myself helpless and hopeless, and the only thing that I could do was give my higher power the reins, let God take over, whoever wants you, whoever you wanna call. Yeah, yeah. But a power greater than myself took over. Uh -huh. You know, I couldn't do it. But that power, that came from wherever it comes from is what helped me do that. When was this? Where was it? And they guess this. <laughs> it was <laughs> yesterday. It was six years ago. What was the moment? No, nah, man. It was it was May the sixth, two thousand and nine, dog. Mm. Okay. Yeah. May sixth, two thousand and nine. It was the day in which, like I just said, you know, hey, I can't do this no more. This is not the type of life I want to live. You know, I had that chip. You gave me, you gave me a chip from that time. I don't know if you still got it. I got man. it, dude. I got it. I got it. That's in my, it's in my, uh, it's in my desk in Oregon where I live. And I think about it. Sometimes I hold it. Sometimes I put it on my neck. Yeah. You know, even when we wasn't talking. Yeah. You know, I got a yo-yo. You gave me a fucking yo-yo. <laughs> yeah, I remember the yo-yo. I got too. the yo-yo, man. I got... You still got that yo-yo, man? I got that fucking yo-yo. Yeah, I got that yo-yo. It's on my MPC. I look at that shit, and I'm like, damn, I hope my daddy would like this beat. No matter what, even if we wasn't talking or this or that, I think about you, daddy. I love you. Me too. You know? Me too. Let's talk about some positive nigga shit. Let's talk about family affairs. What's up with that? What's up? Nah, fuck that shit. Let's talk about music real quick. Let's take it back. When did you fall in love with music, daddy? I don't know. It was like five. Tell me about it. Well, you know, when I was, when I was uh, coming up, my grandmother, my, your granddad, mom, mother. All right. I so this is, this is Robert Lloyd Dell Hall's right. mom. Robert Lloyd Dell Hall. Wilhelmina, Wilhelmina Hall. All right. That was her name. Willie Willie Me. Willie Me. I never heard this shit before. <laughs> this is the first time for me. This nigga was smoking crack. I didn't know. <laughs> no, let's hear about it. You know. So. But what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> Daddy. My question is, how did you fall in love with music? What was your, what, what was it? I don't know, man. I just, I just loved it. Mm. 
You know, I mean, it's just something in which like just came my way. How, well, how, how about you? How did you fall in love with music? I think I fell in love with music through you, if I'm being completely honest, you know? I mean, some of my earliest memories is just you dancing at the, the AA meetings, you know what I mean? Which I always thought was like, like deep down in my heart, I was like, man, not you, but I was like, damn, a, a AA dance, that's like the lamest shit of all time. <laughs> you got a bunch of recovering alcoholics and addicts all together dancing. <laughs> With no drugs. Yeah, but see that. Sucks. Listen, no, but see. I don't want to dance sober. What kind of shit is that? These niggas get right. together. I'm like, the fuck? am I right? You don't want to dance sober. I don't want to dance sober. Yo, let's let's talk about some real shit, Daddy. So, how many? Is I feel like everybody in AA is like kind of low key fucking each other. Am I right? I don't kinda, know nothing about that. You do, Daddy. You lying, Daddy. You know about that. I don't know nothing about that. Maybe not now, but maybe once upon a time, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's sucking the fucking a little bit, you know what I mean? You're crazy. Okay, you underneath St. Martin's. What? What about St. Martin's? I, know, I see some shit going on at St. Martin's. They in the bathroom get sucked off in the back by the donuts and, mm. the, and the coffee and shit. But that's okay. We ain't going to talk about that, Daddy. Never seen that. Oh, yeah, bet you ain't, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I fell. In, I definitely fell in love with music, and you were you were a huge part in that. You know what I mean? Like you being such a just a, a incredible. I mean, you're an incredible man, but an incredible black man, black musician. Fucking bro, you taught me how to play congas at five years old. Fucking bongos and congas and all this beautiful fucking African these African drums and teaching me about. I mean, I remember. You might not even remember this shit. You might have been high. But I remember you sitting me down and telling me what it means to be a black man. You might not remember this, but I remember what, when you told me to never what forget. You? you said never forget what it means to be a black man. You said, you said, as a black man, I am special. You said, as a black man, I am unique. I am different. And he was wearing this like, it's a different world dashiki, <laughs> looking like Dwayne Wade or whatever. What's the fuck Dwayne Wade? You know what I'm talking about? From it's a different world. Dwayne Wade, was it with the glasses? He had a, anyway, that was my dad. Whatever the fuck, Dwayne Wayne, uh, D Wade. Did I just say Dwayne? Wade? <laughs> I don't know. And I remember you telling me that shit. And you used to have these. You look like Q-tip and shit. You <laughs> walking around looking all black, and and, and proud of it. I, I remember. <laughs> I remember that. I remember you. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam But but I remember that. And then I remember you. You know, I remember, I remember the first time you gave me an ass whooping. I was like four years old. And oh, you remember that? I was at your house mm -hmm. and I had these ninja stars. And Actually, you threw it. I told you, little nigga, don't throw that. And you do it. But Buy the, me an Aston, okay? The funny thing, though, is that, Dad, you, you know, actually, if I'm being tra very transparent, I mean, I'm clearly transparent <laughs> next to my dad, but anyway, uh, if I'm being transparent, <laughs> I remember when I was three years old and you took me to go get a Halloween outfit and you got a ninja and you really wanted me to get a ninja with you. He was like pressing me out. He was like, we're gonna be the ninja brothers. And I was like, chill my ninja. Like, I don't wanna be a ninja. So what did you become? Then? I was Superman. Mm. And I wanted a Superman costume more than fucking anything. And is that the one that you used to wear to bed and go to sleep? I in? used to wear my Superman outfit all the fucking time. You used to sleep in that thing. You too, know, if dude. I could be completely honest, Daddy, I think it's because I wanted to feel strong, mm -hmm. even as a little boy who felt gotcha. weak in a world. And I remember I used to stand on a big ass green generators in Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. I remember I was like five years old. I'm basically out the out, out grown out of this three year old thing, and and uh, yeah, but. It, Anyway, I'm at your house about a year later and you still got the ninja stars. I have no idea why you still got the ninja stars. And I'm throwing these ninja stars. And I throw one ninja star and it hits the lamp. And you had them like, you had those like real like player porno 90s fluorescent uh, lamp, like the bulb, <laughs> the bulb that like changes color, like shit's like purple. It's like a black light. And you could just see all the semen from the hose you was fucking. No, I'm just kidding. That's a joke. <laughs> um, no, but it was like whatever. And then I hit the, I hit the lampshade and you whooped How me. old were you now? Four. You didn't whoop me. You didn't fucking abuse oh, me. But on. you, you know, but you came up and you fucking smacked me on my ass two or three times because I broke your shit. But to be fair, it was an accident. But at the end of the day, it ain't the fucking end of the world. You didn't abuse me. It wasn't nothing like that. 
But I just remember being like, damn. I've never abused your ass. No, no, you, no, you know, no, no, you never, never had that. You know, one time you were staying at the house. This was around the time that I caught you smoking crack in the bathroom that we was talking about. And I remember you was living in the house with us and it was just before then. And my mom used to make me check in every hour. Yeah, when you're outside. Yeah. Okay, and, 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 and you were supposed to come in the house, right? But you outside showing your ass with your friends. Having fun. I came outside and I lit your ass up, boy. He fucking, he had to, he came back, he had to, he had to fucking, he had that thick ass belt behind him like this. He said, boy, get your ass in the <laughs> hell, rock. Right. And I was like, oh shit, and I just remember. But the funny thing is, is in my mind, I was like, man, you ain't never been there for me a day in my life. You whooping my ass out here in front of all these children. <laughs> But I should have been my ass in the fucking house 15 minutes earlier. So yeah. let's be real. That was a, that was a real moment. <laughs> um, you know, one of my favorite moments of all time, mm. actually several of them, performing with you on stage. Yeah, that's, that, that, those are the moments, man. We got pictures of that. I need to get y'all pictures of that, of me and my daddy performing, you know, and just... That was something that was really special, man. I, I want to just thank you so much for exposing me to that, you know, we'd be in bars, um, 17, 15, 16, 17, 18, through those years, and you took me to these places and you had your whole band, and we used to rehearse together. And my dad, he really would, he would give me five, sometimes even 10 minutes of his own set, and you would let me perform, man. That instilled a lot in me. I don't think I've ever gotten a chance to say thank you. Well, for that. you know, I, I I never knew that. Knew what? what? That 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 did that for you. That was it. That was like my crack. <laughs> I was like, this is it. So I'm like, I need this. I don't shit. know, man. It's it's really funny because I remember those days. I remember those times. I remember when your ass, when I took you to the studio for the first time and you went in the booth and stayed in that bitch for like 45 minutes with just spitting straight on. Yeah, he sure. ain't had no beat either. You know, I would just go in there and just rap acapella. I remember the first time I didn't get a beat though, I did 15 minutes straight. Went through three rhyme books that I had. And I still have that and to, I bought to you this those day. Rhyme books, you did. You I did, you did, Daddy. You did. You bought me. Not only did you buy my my rhyme books, you and, you bought my first rhyme dictionary. That's right. How big was it? No, it was little. It was like this big. Little as your dick, right? I got that big dick. I got your dick, Daddy. <laughs> it's just not. It's just not circumcised. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got that big dick. I'm gonna be honest. Mm. I do. It is what it is. Eight inches. It's a Comcast remote. I took the, I swear to God. I was fucking my wife one night. We had a Comcast remote. I was joking. I was like, could you imagine if my dick was this, if it could turn the TV on, it could turn you on, girl. And I did it. I was like, oh shit, it's the same size. And then she broke my dick. I ever tell you about the time my wife low key broke my dick? No, we really. We'll talk about that another time. Um, that's cool. We went down memory lane. We had some fun. Let's talk about some different shit, man. What, what, uh, What's your favorite food? Don't say pussy. That's some shit my dad would say. <laughs> What's your favorite food? I love lobster. I love steak. Damn, nigga, was you rich? You rich? You rich? <laughs> shit. No wonder my dad came to me. He was like, let's go to Ruth Chris this weekend. I said, what are we, peasants? We're going to Mastro's. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what are we, peasants? I'm just we're going, where? We're going to Mastro's. Oh, you don't know about that? That's Master Bader? What? You say you're going to masturbate. I mean, I'm, I'm down around. Whatever. <laughs> um, what's your favorite color? Silver. Really? You fucking with me? Silver. Silver Surfer for fucking four. What is it? The four. Silver. What am I wearing? What the fuck am I wearing? Silver, see? Silver. That's my color. A lot of niggas like that gold shit. Oh, what'd you say? If anything, I like And I ain't a real one? If anything, anything, if I, I got 20 I, G's I like on my hand, gold. Daddy? I like white gold. You like white gold? That's how I feel. I feel like white, black gold. <laughs> Texas tea. Texas tea. Mm -hmm. What's that? Oil. Some. some oh, okay. How's that? Some, some back shit. now here. Don't come <laughs> back now here, Daddy. Why don't you tell me about the? Uh, why don't you tell me about the genre of music that you created? What's it called? Uh, it's H J G R, which stands for hip jazz garage. 
hip, jazz, go rock. Hip hop, jazz, go go, and rock and roll. With flavors of Afro Latin, Afro Cuban. I told you I was black, y'all niggas. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's talk about that, man. What inspired you to kind of almost create this multi sub genre within itself? You know, because I've been hearing about hip, jazz, go rock. That's my brother Jesse <laughs> forever, man. And, but you really, man, you out here, you like Prince meets Chuck D. <laughs> like you out here, you on some, you, you definitely have always been on some different shit. You, you made some, some records for the ladies. You made some records for the club. You made some records for black people. You just white kinda, people too. White people too. Mm -hmm. As long as they woke. <laughs> <laughs> um, so where did your where did your love of music really begin, Daddy? As I said, man, um, I was forced to music by my aunt, by my grandmother, because she had me playing it at the keyboard when I was like five, man. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to play keyboard. I wanted to play football. That's what I wanted. Really? I wanted to play football. Wow. So how did that go? Did you play? I was too, uh, between us, I was too poor to afford, if I could just tell you a quick story, and I'd love to hear about your football story. I was too, I was too poor to ever afford jerseys or to be able to join a league. And I remember uh, I used to play baseball, kind of like the kids from the Sandlot. You know, you might not have seen that movie, but I kind of look like Squints. <laughs> and uh, I remember I used to tell, <laughs> you ready? Something I never told the whole wide world. Daddy, I used to play baseball with these white kids and these privileged kids, and I used to tell them my daddy was a millionaire. I say my daddy. He's a damn lie. I know it was, <laughs> but I used to say my daddy's got a million dollars. You know why I used to lie and I used to say that? No, why? Because I just wanted to feel accepted. Yeah, well, I mean, did you did you feel accepted? No, they was like, no, you ain't, nigga, you broke as fuck. <laughs> West Deer Park, <laughs> you, you know you on food stamps. <laughs> So that's my story. So tell me about, what is it? Did you play football? Yeah, I played football. Were I you, played Little League. Were you good? League. Were you good? I was good. You good? I played in high school. So then where did your love of music begin? My love of music began when, really, really began when I got into, like, junior high. Because I had Roberta Flack as my music teacher. Roberta Flack? Yeah, she was my music teacher. What was her ethnicity? Hmm? What was her Roberta, ethnicity? Roberta Flack is black. She's a black one? You never heard The Closer I Get To You? Roberta Flack is black. No, I never heard that song. The Closer that song? I Get To You. Uh. Look it up, man. I guarantee you. Exactly. You do all I got. Oh, shit, man. Not as black as I thought. <laughs> okay, that's dope. No, but you know, she was she was really instrumental in me, um, really wanting to do music because she was my vocal teacher. Wait, what grade again? This is like seventh grade. Oh wow! So you're like twelve years old, just started busting nuts. I don't know about all that. <laughs> I mean, twelve years old, you busting nuts. I was busting nuts at twelve years old. Yeah, is that why you said you were busting nuts and it was coming down? And you were coming on my carpet and was rubbing. No, no, no. Carpet. That was before I could actually. I was shooting ghost loads, so nothing was coming out. But I do remember that. <laughs> yeah, when I was like sixteen and I lived with you, you had these porno videos, and I used to go in and I used to go in your shit when you was out just hustling, doing your thing. You were. You had to remember time. that was Uncle Mike's porno. Shit. I don't know, nigga. It was in your fucking room. All I know is I go in your room. So you can say it was Uncle Mike's shit, but I go in your room and there's just a box. It was like the Goonies. It was like I've like discovered this like treasure trove of titties. So and I go you in. Do? What you mean? What I did? I just I would sit there and you had this big ass TV because you never you wouldn't really want me in your room like that. Kind of big TV. What you mean? It was like I, a good. I, it was like a good forty inches. Like it was like a nice. 40 inches. So I'm grabbing about that my. kind of come up off the floor that was. No, 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 no. It was just. Project bro, it was 2006. Yeah, this shit was. was no, no, no. Big. This was like a big ass tube TV. This shit looked like we was a Xenon fucking Zetus to Petus and Disney Channel shit. Mm -hmm. And it was there. And then I just used to sit there and I'd be watching this shit. And it would, it would usually be like a doctor. Mm -hmm. And the doctor was like, you have a vagina in the back of your neck. No, I'm just kidding. That's a joke from earlier. <laughs> anyway, we ain't gonna, we're not going to get into that. But I would be watching these things, and then I would just, you know, I would do my thing. You know, I'm a kid. I'm, exp I'm, a, I'm experimenting with myself. I'm learning my body. Mm -hmm. I'm busting nuts on your carpet and wiping it in. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it is, it is what it is. And so I, I did that like a good 9,000 times. 9,000? 9, 9,000. Damn, I, man. That's a lot. It is. I mean, you was full of a lot of cum, but damn. Oh, boy. gross, daddy. Don't say I was full of a lot of cum. That's gross. I don't hear that shit. Anyway, so, and meanwhile, I just told him how I came all over his floor. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me ask you a question, because I want to see how you remember this situation, because I'm going to tell you exactly how I remember it. So for those of you out there who don't know, because I would really love to discuss this, but I'm going to ask you about a specific situation and then we can get into the rest of it. My mother, Terry Lee Miller, who was married, I don't know, three, four times, all to black men with systemic racism built into her. You know, you know, my mother used to call me a nigger. Did you know that? Dad? Yeah, but you want to know something? She never called me one. She called me that. And you know who else she called that? My sisters and Jesse and my brother. That's deep. Wow, that is deep. Yeah. And you especially, know what? especially when I'm black and, you know, she don't, she never called but all me. But her, all her other baby daddies is what? They're all black. Mm -hmm. Before we get into all that. So, <laughs> um, yeah. What the fuck was I finna say? I'm say hi to all you Logic fans out there. Hey, they about to be your fans, daddy. We finna do this album together. But we not gonna get in. We don't want to talk about talk that too about much. That. We don't want to talk about that too much, daddy. We're, we're here first. We're healing first, and then we're stealing first. You know what I'm saying? That's that, ooh, eh. You know what's funny? You know I never called you daddy before. You know why I call you daddy now? Why? Because my son calls me daddy. Mm-hmm. And I, he calls me daddy, and he means it, and he loves me, and I mean it, and I love you. And that's, you know, I feel the same way, daddy. Yeah, but you're going to call me zaddy with a Z. <laughs> Zam <Zaddy. laughs> um, So, you want to hit this? Yeah. You good? You sure? I, I'll hit this first. Right. You scared? You scared to hit weed on? Yeah. You're all right. You're gross. Don't worry. You ain't going to need government assistance much longer after we jump this album, nigga. Yeah, well, tell, <laughs> tell that to Social Security. <laughs> You'll be all right. They ain't watching you. So, also, this ain't weed. It's tea tree. It really is Delta H C D C B D. I want you to I want you to answer me honestly. <clears throat> when I was 16 years old, my mother got stabbed. She was hanging around with a bunch of kids, teenagers, doing dope, smoking drugs, fucking them, for real. And she was in this field one night, and uh, a bunch of people were. Uh, She's with a bunch of youngins, right? She's a bunch of youngins, yeah, yeah. Teenagers, early 20s. Um, there was some kind of dispute, and one of them, uh, my, my mother called them a nigger <coughs> with a hard arm and a very capital N. And they stabbed the shit out of this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so she got stabbed because she said the wildest shit that you could possibly say, something that I heard used towards me and my brothers and sisters for many years. And I remember her, uh, I remember I got the call and I was living with you at the time. And my brother Jesse called me, told me what happened, told me I needed to get there immediately. And I remember telling you, and you wouldn't give me a ride. Do you remember this? No. Okay, all good, once again, not here to, we're not, it's the same argument, the same, nothing like that. I remember you wouldn't give me a ride. I remember you being upset. And I think the only reason you were upset is because you felt like I was leaving you. And I remember you told me, if you want to go live with your mother so goddamn bad, take the bus. Now, you say you don't remember this, so please don't tell me that what I'm saying never happened because it did. As I said, I don't remember it. Exactly, and I ain't even. But if it did happen, I would apologize. Have. It's all good, no, for sure. So I go live with my mom, uh, and, I, and I remember I went to go take care of her. And so before I had lived with my mom, and then I lived with you for a little bit, and I went back and I lived over there. Uh, what do you remember about my mother getting stabbed? I really don't remember anything. Huh? I really don't remember much about that. I don't know what the circumstances were other than what was told to me. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, that was a hard time, man, because I remember actually, uh, 
they think about this, you know, I'm surrounded by you. I'm surrounded by black excellence, beautiful black people, you know, regardless of what some of us may have been going through. You know what I mean? Uncle Mike, yourself, my brothers, my sisters, incredible people in my life. And then I remember going back home to my mother. Pete. How I went, uh, I went after she had gotten stabbed and I went to go take care of her. And she was like all bloody and I had to change her bandages on my sister's couch. Mm -hmm. that, that's some new shit to me. The best way I could describe a stab victim is like, uh, at least the way that it was with her, it was small. It was a smaller knife. <coughs> it was like crusted jelly over skin. It was like wild. And say what? Crusted what? Crusted jelly. It was just, when I cleaned the wounds, it was it was some sick shit. It was like jelly. Yeah. And then I remember walking. My mother had to hold her and walk her from my sister's apartment to our apartment because we lived in the same condo. Or excuse me, same complex. So this was where this was in Germantown. This was in Germantown, Great Eagle Court, Germantown. <coughs> and this is deep. I remember helping my mother down the stairs and a mailman walked past us and she goes, he's black. No, I ain't never heard of that shit. That's some wild shit. And the reason I know she said that now looking back is because she had been stabbed by a black person. <laughs> I would be real like, I love you, mama. We ain't talked in over a decade. You was a dumbass bitch. You do not use such words on fucking people. What you think? If you call somebody an N-word with a hard R, yeah, you might get R. shot in the head. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? So then for her to like use this displaced anger and systemic racism from her childhood and da 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 and I just remember her walking and I was just like, yo, this is fucked up. Mm. Cause I was like, I ain't finna let this shit rub off on me for whatever reason and be under the same house with this woman. So that's why I need to do escape it. Mm. And that's a real thing. And so anyway, there's a little experience that I went through. Dad, what's one of your favorite memories performing? Take me through it. Take me through the, take me through the whole experience. I want to know about it. One of my favorite memories that really stick out, it was when I played with EU. Uh, and it was. And that stands for? Experience Unlimited. Experience Unlimited. Shout out Chocolate City. What's Chocolate City? It ain't chocolate no more. I know, but what's Chocolate City? It was DC. It was DC. Why do you yeah, say now, now, why do you say it ain't chocolate no more? Uh, because um it it's been diluted. How because, so? Because because white people live there too. So when you have white people and you have black people, it doesn't turn chocolate. It it does not be dark chocolate, it turns to light chocolate. Light and chocolate. then eventually it's turned into white chocolate. Is it white chocolate or is it just like olive? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, is it white chocolate or is it olive? You know what I mean? So wait, what you saying? You don't like mixed race people? No, nah, man, I'm mixed race people. How can I not like myself? Especially me. doesn't make sense. Yo, let me ask you something, Dad. This is just some real ass shit. So like you are who you are, you know what I'm saying, as a man. But you being like a black man and being with my mom and then me coming out the way that I look, like, were you surprised? Was I surprised? Yeah, but I mean, even just necessarily by no, my features. No, because all my <laughs> other kids looked like they was white when they were born. So, you know, that's just how that shit is. Your, yeah. your, your pigmentation just became a little bit lighter. <laughs> As I said, you, you just incognito, that, you know. <laughs> And that's all. Daddy, I got to do a whole album called that shit now. So I can just hear Fontano and Joe Budden. <laughs> so, Dad, so we already started making some music today. You know, I've always really wanted to make music with you, I'm going to be honest. I really, I really always wanted to make music with you. And I think I'm blessed enough to have found a, and I don't mean this in no type of way, patience when understanding you as a man. And I'm here and we're here. 
and we kind of making some some dope music together. Because after this, I'm gonna have you singing a couple hooks on some records. How does it feel to be able to make music as father and son? No well, it's because of you. Well, that that's I something I've always wanted to do. That's that's just one of my you know dreams that have that's coming true before I just before you know God decides to take me to the next plane. Well, damn. You know, That's very sweet. You're saying this is a, a kind of a bucket list moment for you to make music together? I, I would say that. Yeah, and, and, and you know, the really big bucket moment would be once you and I take that stage together. Oh, we're going to do that then. You know what I'm saying? We're going to do it. And we're going to so win it and so win it. Wow. Incest <laughs> edition. Did I just say incest edition? Is that what I meant? What you say? I don't know. Uh, I'm really excited to take the stage together, Daddy. Zaddy. I think it's going to be dope. I'm fucking lit. Sean? I'm lit. Sean? What's up, Sean? That's what me and my brothers, we be joking with my dad. We be playing Call of Duty. And we be like, Sean, what's up, Sean? That's how he says it when he says, what's up, Sean? How you doing? Daddy, how do you feel about flying? Oh, man, I love flying. Really? Yeah. Have you ever, like, had a bad flight or you've been all right? I mean, I mean, I've only been on a few flights in my life. <laughs> That's so, a broke nigga shit right there, my yeah. man. Honest. How many flights do you think you've been on, Dad? Maybe five. Five? Yeah. I've flown you out like three times. <laughs> Is this it? Okay, cool. Um, and I see each time, every time, I, every time I've flown out here, it's always been... Like uh, the first time, I think it was JetBlue, uh, something like that. Yeah, that was the shit back then. Now yeah. we just Team Delta. You, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, I remember all that shit, you know. I, I remember, and, and I'm so grateful to have had the experiences that you've given me. Thank you, Dad. You know, I really am. What's the, what was the 80s like? I don't know. I forgot. <laughs> I just, you know. I just think when I think about the '80s, I just think about like, I don't know why I just see the Joker like doing cocaine in the nightclub. Talk about, stop trying to hit me and hit me, hit me. <laughs> like I don't know why I just see the Joker in the nightclub. Like, hit me. <laughs> anyway, so like, what was it like from what you can remember? Was it like niggas doing cocaine? Was it like wild shit going on? Was this like the beginning of like a biracial movement? Like what's going on? You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it was just shit, man. All right, bet. You know, I mean, same old shit, different day. This is a different year. This is, you know, but the same old shit's going on. I have no idea what the fuck you just said. <laughs> I was going to be completely honest. All right, I love you. Come on, man. <laughs> that was great. I love you. Thank you for that. Hey, what's up, guys? Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Logically Speaking. Please make sure you click the link and check out more things. Don't forget to subscribe. All those things, things like that. Don't forget. Peace.